Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Subtle BC here doing another video episode of Growing for Freedom. And in today's video episode, guys, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time going over all of the things that we've been working on here over in the nursery locations at headquarters. And uh, for all you guys that have not been following along, in the last video episode that we did from the Epic Nursery at Site B, I uh, wanted to do some before and after uh, videos of not only the nursery at that location, but also the one over here. So, uh, without further ado, just want to show you guys some quick video clips here of the SFEOG mothers that uh, cuttings were just taken from and also wanted to uh, give you guys a correction in the number of cuttings taken. I believe that I reported only about 325 or uh, 375 clones were taken in the most recent round and I was actually incorrect. There were some cuttings that I had not accounted for and uh, as it turns out guys there were actually about 500 uh, cuttings that were taking on that most recent round so um, obviously a lot and uh, like I've said in previous videos when talking about mother plants that is you generally will see like one gloryful you know cut round a uh, real big one right before the plants basically kick the bucket and that is more or less where we are at this point with the SFEOGs so obviously guys it's uh, real prudent for us to get some new SFEOG mother plants here on deck and these are basically them now uh, obviously guys before any of these plants were brought in here we did have four kryptonite mothers but because of the fact that we had been dealing with some inf insect infestation it was kind of 50-50 whether, whether or not it was even really worth it to keep the plants, uh, decided to go ahead and scrap the plants. And we probably could have brought them back, but they were getting consistently over vertical and burning you know, inside of the lighting systems, which was really pissing me off. And because of the fact that we really needed a heavy duty resource to use to bring up the next generation of mothers, you know, I felt it was probably in our best interest to just take those down and then uh, go ahead and bring in all these new plants. So uh, we got 12 SFEOGs here on the right hand side and then we've got 12 kryptonites here on the left. So these 12 kryptonites here will obviously replenish this garden. We'll be calling out four of these and keeping the best eight and then we'll be doing the same over here with the SFBOGs. So um, yeah, you know, at this point guys, as far as the SFBOGs are concerned over in the headquarters, uh, in the production line, we are gonna run them, you know, uh, just for another couple weeks just to see what happens because at this point, you know, this tent here is more than adequate to take care of all of these plants. And if I just retire the SFBs now, then we'll just have a big empty production line with really nothing to put into it, you know. So we are going to run the eight mothers, you know, they have given us so much production over these last few months. So we're just going to see what happens, you know, uh, going to trim them up as you can see that uh, already that we've taken all, you know, a lot of the dead foliage out of these things. So we are now just going to run them for you know, fuck, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, um, until it no longer makes sense for us to do so. Because at some point, guys, all the plants over here in this garden are going to get too large for us to keep all of them. And once we take our cullings and once the SFEOGs are retired, we will then move the SFEOGs out of this location over to the main production line and then uh, work towards, you know, repeating what we just did uh, because we had one hell of a run there, guys, with those SFEOG mothers. So uh, that brings us back, you know, to what the t uh, we're dealing with here in the tent. You know, obviously, when you reset the thing, you want to get it as clean as possible. So you can see we've done a great job here getting the floor cleaned up and just getting this whole thing reset, basically. And also used a uh, an attain, I believe it's the attain TR, uh, basically an aerosol pesticide that um, is designed to treat a hell of a lot more square footage than is what is inside this tent. So I uh, went ahead and set off one of those, and you know, got, went ahead and got this uh, tent here as insect free as possible. Now, another thing that we're doing is uh, because of the fact that it looks like these plants, guys, are not going to be ready here for quite some time, um, I did elect to take a few of the cullings from the, uh, the plants that we're going to be using on deck. So uh, I want to go ahead and show you guys a video clip here, and these are all the plants that we're going to be using um, for the money maker. So once we harvest the money maker, you know, which was basically the failed aptus grow, we are then going to transition back into SFBOGO again. again. And uh, at this point, guys, we've got, what is it, um, 18 total. So only two more calls left to go and really doing well with these plants, I think. But uh, because of the fact that mothers are in such bad shape, we have taken the cullings from those flood and drain tables and transplanted them into smaller uh, cocoa pots. Uh, basically smaller than the ones that we're using here in the tent, but obviously a lot better than just using the four inch rockwell blocks alone. And these are going to be basically set aside as a stopgap measure. So um, if it turns out we have to retire um, some of the SFEOGs or all of them, 
then at least we're gonna have some plants that are a little bit further ahead than the ones here in the tent that we can take cuttings from uh, before we transition over to these plants. But uh, make no mistake, guys, um, we are gonna be using the plants here in this tent to replace the production line because they are gonna be grown in one unified set and we just don't have enough cullings uh, to get a full set of mother plants, nor would we wanna necessarily use culling plants for mothers anyways. You know, you really wanna focus on getting the best plants that you possibly can for your mothers. So um, as it stands right now, guys, I think things are looking fairly good, at least with the kryptonites. They seem to have acclimated really well to this environment. But the uh, some of the SFVOGs, unfortunately, are not doing quite so well. In fact, uh, one of the ones back here, you see it's looking very limpy. And it's not from um, underwatering. You know, these plants have been very well watered. If anything, it might be, might be just a little bit too well watered. And I think it might be just a little cold in here as well. Uh, in fact, the AC was kind of doing some weird shit. And, uh, you know, not uh, the compressor was turning off prematurely and giving me error messages. But then uh, when I checked the filter, it was really dusty, man. And when I cleaned it out, the, uh, the AC unit just completely came back to life. So it's been kind of cold in here. And because of the fact that we've been running the lighting at half strength, you know, we're only running uh, 1200 watts total. But, you know, I do want to take it easy on these plants just for the first couple of days. But we are going to be probably stepping up the wattage here on the third or fourth day and possibly taking, up, taking them up all the way up to 2400 watts. I mean, we do want to get these plants grown as quickly as possible. Now, one thing I did want to share with everybody before um, we end this video here is that I had mentioned in previous videos how I thought it would be a better idea to basically use a 1000 uh, watt bulb instead of the 600 watt bulbs for just about any purpose you can think of. And it's funny because when we were going through, uh, going through all this reset work, um, one of those real reds had failed. And I didn't mention this uh, initially when I bought those bulbs, but one of them was DOA. You know, so went back, got the DOA replacement, that wasn't a big deal. But when I came back to replace the other bulb, which had just failed, and remember guys, I had just gotten these things, you know, not even more than two months ago. Um, you know, the owner at Green Door was not very happy, um, not with me, but with the fact that, you know, he seems to have been getting a lot of these real reds back, um, you know, a lot sooner than he should be. So I just wanted to get that information out there that it seems that some of these real reds you know, got some quality control issues, so keep that in mind if you are potentially looking at them as a replacement for any other kind of bulb that you're using. But um, as you can see here, guys, these bulbs are full-sized iHorn Lux Super HPS 1000s. And uh, obviously, you can run these in a 600 watt ballast. I run my 1000 watts at lower modes all the time. And right now, they are running in a 300 watt mode, but you can see that the filaments are so much larger and the bulb actually occupies you know, like almost the full length of the tube. So I think you're gonna get a little bit better quality of light that way. And since I already have these bulbs here laying around, I figured I might as well just throw them in here and just go ahead and use the remaining real reds that I have as backups. But uh, I'm not expecting to have any problems with these bulbs. There's not really not that much mileage on them. These uh, were set essentially the new ones that I used to uh, replace the old 1000 watts from the Epic 6K, which you know obviously was taken down a long time ago and then these bulbs were just uh, put into storage. But um, yeah, guys, I'm uh, you know getting these in here not only because uh, I think I'm gonna get better results with mother plants, but you never know, guys. I might also use this tent here as a flowering garden at some point in the future, and I think that the iHortalux bulb would be a much better way to go. But that is pretty much it, guys, for this video update. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them. If you do have uh, specific questions or topic topics that you want to have discussed on the SubWC show, email those directly to me at subwcqna at gmail. Dot com. So uh, next video update guys, uh, we're just going to be checking in real quick um, at the progress of the uh, Epic Nursery at Site B. You know, we're going to look at all the changes that have been done, you know, moving things around and also give you guys a chance to look at how the mothers look one day after cutting. And uh, yeah, it should be interesting as always guys. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all next time.